Warriors, man, you got DeFi, you got cryptocurrencies, you got NFTs, and now security tokens. Man, my name is Coach JB. I am the top health and mindset coach in the world. What you believe in your heart, you think in your mind will eventually become your words and become your reality. If you can see it in your mind, eventually you can hold it right here in your hands. What you repeatedly do gets ingrained in your subconscious mind. What gets ingrained in your subconscious mind becomes an unconscious activity. And we have the most devastatingly handsome research team in the whole wide world here today to talk about security tokens. Now, the crypto space can be very confusing, first of all, just to get started. But you got your NFTs, you got DeFi, and the new thing coming in is security tokens. Now, why are security tokens coming in and why are they important? Think about the XRP lawsuit, right? The whole thing about it is whether it's a security or not a security. Now, we're not going to get into the XRP lawsuit today, but we're going to talk to you about what's coming in the future, security tokens. As Elizabeth Warren said yesterday in my video on Friday, excuse me, on Friday, she talked about the fact that they are working to bring regulation in, especially for cryptocurrency exchanges. So security tokens going to be the future. In my opinion, coming from banking and understand what's happening and Jamie Dimon saying that we should be scared shitless of fintech is that everything's going to be tokenized. Everything's going to be tokenized. So let me explain it from my perspective being a CEO. So we have the 3T Warrior Academy. We're launching the Uncommon 1% business. Eventually, I'll be able to tokenize both of those companies and someone could buy shares in the company through a tokenized asset. As an influencer, I could tokenize myself and sell tokenized assets to help build my influence or gain money off of my influence, right? So just to kind of give you a brief overview of that, basically what's happening is everything is going decentralized. You don't have to have these guys in ties and suits. You can have a cutoff shirt behind your computer and build your own tokenized security. This stuff is getting wild, Warriors. So we're moving into an environment where everything is managed by the people, peer to peer. We went from taxis to Ubers, hotels to Airbnbs, rental car companies to Turo, and now we become our own ecosystem through decentralized finance. This is the next level where So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it around the world. I'm gonna introduce you guys quickly to our team. We got Johnny Crypto, we got Abdullah, and we got Mario. And a lot of you guys got to meet this beautiful team uh, in Las Vegas. Now, Mario, we can't even tie him down. He's traveling all over the world. This guy is like a world traveler. Someday you'll get to meet the beautiful face of Mario, or we're gonna try to fly and see him. So we will be doing more meet and greets in the future. We'll be traveling around the United States to meet all of you guys. But we just wanna say we're very, very grateful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kick it around the world. We're gonna go to Johnny Crypto. Um, and then we're going to go to Abdullah and then Mario. And please comment down below what you guys would like to see next from the research team. So, Johnny Crypto, the floor is yours. Thank you, Coach. Good morning, everybody. And for you, good evening or enjoy your dinner there, Mario, as you're a few hours ahead. Um, so today, Coach, I'd like to take everybody through. Uh, you talked about INX or you talked about security tokens. And so uh, one of the very first out there. Um, that was regulated by the U.S. government, SEC, is INX. So I'd like to uh, share my screen here and just take everybody through what that is. Uh, so as we share this, let me know when you guys can see the, uh, the presentation. Yep, so I have your presentation up there. Can you guys see it? Yep, I can see it. Yeah, I got it up there for you, bud. Okay. All right. So basically, yes. Yeah. So basically what INX is, everybody says, hey, what is it? What is it? INX is very interesting. They um, are are both a cryptocurrency and a security token exchange platform. So basically it's a trading platform uh, where you can trade both. So if you think today you've got a Kraken or a Crypto.com or um, BitTrue, all of those are trading platforms for cryptocurrencies. Then you have E-Trade, Ameritrade, Charles Schwab. Those are all trading platforms for stocks or securities. You don't have a company yet that does both. And you don't have one that's regulated by the SEC until now. And that's basically in a nutshell what INX is. They're bringing both the crypto world and the security world together into one location. So you can go to the next slide. And basically, as they're bringing that together, they're doing it and they're, and they're smart about it. 
they don't want to end up in front of a lawsuit with the SEC. So what they did before they even launched this token and this trading platform, they went and got fully regulated and followed all the rules from the SEC to get SEC approval so that they can offer a security token. Um, or you go to the next slide. Basically, what you're going to see here is they're going to have three main services. So they're going to have a crypto trading platform. They're going to have a security token trading platform, which I think is also going to include equities, but that I think is going to come later. And then they've got this brokerage type of services they're going to provide um, that's going to be provided uh, overseas to, uh, to European markets. Um, but before I jump into the benefits, just to give everybody a background, if you're sitting there wondering what is a security versus what is a cryptocurrency, a cryptocurrency, basically the way to think about that is a cryptocurrency <clears throat> is a, um, a, a digital representation of a value of a, a, a store of, of a value or currency. So in other words, similar to something that people can trade gold, US dollar, euro. It's just uh, think about it as a currency that you can trade in digital form versus a security token. A security token is 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 a token that's considered to represent a security uh, and requires it's not a currency. So it represents some some value of a company or an asset and it requires registration under the SEC. And, and that digital ownership is similar to you owning, for example, a stock or a bond. Um, and that whatever you own, it could have an underlying uh, dividend that it would pay to you. The performance of it might go up and down based on the company performance. Right. So so think of it uh, almost like just a digital stock at the end of the day. So a digital security is not a cryptocurrency. It, it represents a asset that that asset grows up and down in value, and then your the price of that security goes up with the business. Whereas if you think of a currency, the dollar is a dollar. It's always a dollar, right? So that's the way to think of the difference between a security and a cryptocurrency. And that's right now the big challenge we all know with XRP. They're trying to decide what is it, right? We all know it's a currency, but you know for whatever the reason, that's being battled out in court, and we're going to get to that soon. Now, why do you want to be part of INX or what's the benefits of the trading platform? Um, basically, they have some really, really cool real world solves that they bring to the table. One of the ones I just talked about is regulation, right? So right now, when you trade on BitTrue or Kraken or Coinbase, none of those are, are, are fully SEC certified or, or, or approved. So uh, they do follow know your rules, KYC, know your customer type rules. But the reality is they're not fully secured by them. So they could get challenged someday in the future. These guys are trying to prevent that. So they went and, and right to the SEC and said, hey, tell us what to do. How do we set this up properly? And they've done that. Um, the other thing that's nice here is they've got a huge cash fund. $25 million of the money they raise is set aside for a cash fund. So if they get hacked, cybersecurity, they go out of business, they've got $25 million worth that will actually go to cover people's losses. A lot of the other companies you know, don't have that. And what I really like about it, the, the, the other box I have circled here in, in, in red, is their trading platform is designed to actually handle high, high volume trading. So how many of you out there today, raise your hand, are out there and when euphoria happens, you know, when the market was taken off in February, when you went to trade on Kraken or BitTrue or any website, Coinbase, Binance, when you tried to log into your account, what happened? You couldn't get in, right? It was crashed. Well, these guys are, are have designed for that. So that in those high, high volume events, they won't crash. So, and at the end of the day, what it really means is mom and pop investors can now get in the game. Now that's the trading platform. Now as the token, the security token, INX offers their token and it is a security token, but what, so it kind of represents the value of this trading platform company they created, but it also has a tokenomics effect to it. So that's what I really love about it. It's both a security token and a utility token and because it's it's you know because it has this uh security aspect to it they have to actually call it security token um and the benefits are it has a, a depreciation value so as you continue to use it it burns coins so its value will continue to rise in price because it has a capped amount that's what i really love about it um it has capped at 270 million coins that's all they'll ever be 
And as they get burned, the less coins they're in the market, the more they're going to be worth. So that's from the tokenomics, you know, typically cryptocurrency perspective. Now, as a security, the value it adds, as you can see here, I have circled in red. And you guys can come back and watch these slides later. In red here, they're also going to give a distribution of the company profits, like a dividend. And that's why it's a security token. That's the difference. Cryptocurrencies don't give dividends, right? But stocks, when you own one, gives a dividend. That's primarily what's happening here. So it's going to give you a tokenomics effect and a security effect. Now, in terms of what it means for the world that's coming, securities, at the end of the day, it's all about enabling this new class, new way to think about how you digitize assets. So in the old world, if you look at the boxes above, you went, a company existed, you went and bought its equity shares. That, that meant that's the representation of the company. And if you bought it, then you owned a portion of the company. In the digital world, it's similar but different. As you can see on the bottom row, you're going to have a digital security token that's going to represent not the company anymore, but an asset. It could be the company. It could be a project in the company. It could be some of the company's IP. Coach, it could be your company. It could be just your gym equipment. It could be your shoes. It could be real estate. It could be anything you want it to be. So it's basically saying, hey, I'm going to take these assets and I'm going to give it a value and I'm going to assign so many tokens to it to represent its value. That is what's happening in a nutshell. If you go to the next slide, basically the reality is it's saying anything can be tokenized. And that that alternative asset market, real estate, venture capital, private equity, hedge funds, all these represent about $9 trillion worth of value that's out there that could be unlocked. And even beyond that, that's going to be tokenized. So tokenization is coming and, and, and Abs will get a little more into that. But in a nutshell, the way to think about it is now you've got this security aspect, right? You got a security token. You take this thing, and it's just like if I want to say, hey, this mouse is worth, I don't know, thousand dollars to me. And I make a thousand tokens, and each token is worth a dollar. And then I go and I and I can use it and, and sell this mouse to somebody, right? Or it's value to it. And people can own it. And if it goes up in value, they gain from it. And this is just a quick snapshot of the cryptocurrency trading platform. I just thought I'd share it with everybody. Uh, it's new. They're just getting started. They literally launched this thing a few weeks ago. They've only got about seven or eight tokens, as you can see right now, the trade that's going to continue to grow. And then they have a separate platform, the crypto. Uh, there's a crypto platform. They also have a security token platform for any token that, for example, coach might represent your company, right? Or some other company that would be traded on a different platform. So there's two different platforms they've created to kind of silo it and keep them separate. Token the platform, which will be here on cryptocurrency and then the security uh, tokens would be on a separate trading platform. And that's in a nutshell what I have, Coach, to just to give people a basic understanding of what INX is, the difference between a security token and a and a cryptocurrency, and in a nutshell, how you can benefit if you buy the token and hold on to it for the long run. As the company grows, you'll benefit from both the coin uh, scarcity as it burns coins and going up in value, and if the company makes money, you'll gain from its profits. This is amazing. This is amazing that I actually, actually can tokenize my shoes and sell them. That's I'm just kidding. This is freaking amazing. I just love it. It's like it shows you guys. You have to the understand. Beer. This is why the, the beer tokenize the beer. Tokenize this is, the beer. This is why the government is getting so they they resist it. They regulate it. They sue it. They get involved in it because of this right here. And this company's smart. They're getting involved. So we'll head over to Abdullah. Abdullah, uh, what do you know about security tokens, and what can you share with us? Yep. So I'm going to give kind of a broad overview of how security tokens are eventually, and it might take 10 years, but affect every industry. And I'm just going to give a few examples of that. So the biggest difference between security tokens and traditional securities, in my, my opinion, is not only that you can fractionalize these assets and divide them and get the most value out of them, but also these markets never close down. If it's Sunday at 6 p.m., traditionally, you'd say, oh, my God, I got to get up at nine and sell my Apple shares. Well, now you can go right online on Sunday and get rid of all that crap that you don't want to have anymore. But what I found really interesting was the priority that you're allowed to institute with these security tokens. So for example, if Apple's coming out with a new iPhone and you have these massive amount of investors that want to line up outside of stores, well, you can have a security token issued where if you purchase the security token prior to that sale, you get priority on these iPhones. So you're able to skip the line, you can get discounts, all kinds of things like that. And that's the first time this has ever happened. So 
that's going to be one of these things that affects every industry. You can use that for all types of projects. Another example would be that if, if you wanted to invest in Tesla, for example, and you really liked the Cybertruck, but you didn't like the Model T and you wanted to just invest in the, in, in the Cybertruck without having the downside of investing in the Model T because of all the competition, you'd be able to take a security token for the Cybertruck and only invest in that specific project. That's never been offered before. You're not able to do that in any environment right now that, that currently exists. So allowing for these companies to have all these new ways for investors to be involved in specific projects is gonna create even more revenue and you're able to fractionalize these investments. So if I wanted to buy an expensive piece of artwork, for example, but I only have $100, well, I'm not gonna be able to buy a Van Gogh painting, but let's say somebody tokenized that asset I would be able to buy 0.01% of that painting. And then I'm technically an owner. And not only that, but if that painting is bought and sold and a Van Gogh painting might not be a great example, but if that token, if it's bought and sold, I'm going to receive 0.01% of those profits. And that's never been seen before. But something else that I wanted to touch on was that people are able to build their own personal brands with these security tokens. So I'm not sure how INX is going to play into that specifically, but I know that for these micro economies that are going to be created and coach is a great example of this. He could offer a security token where owners are offered a certain amount of time or access to a platform that only these security token holders will have available. So I think that once bigger celebrities and market influencers start to capitalize on these markets, you're going to see tons of these platforms where I'm pretty sure Gary Vaynerchuk and even a few months ago, Post Malone did the same concept with NFTs. But these security tokens are, are the next level of that same idea. So I'm really looking forward to that taking place. That's really all I wanted to touch upon. So like, for example, just put it in context. So 3T Warrior Academy, right? So we, I could go and say, all right, guys, I'm offering a security for 3T Warrior Academy. You can buy a portion of our academy. And if we sold it in 15 years, you would get the dividend based on the portion that you own, right? Is that correct? Yes. And it can even be more specific than that. So every quarter you could pay those people who own these security tokens a percentage of your profits, or you could exchange these security tokens for your time. So I have 10 security tokens, that's 10 minutes with Coach JV on Zoom, and I'm able to cash those in whenever I feel is necessary. That's amazing. So I was thinking too, you could develop point systems. So someone who finished their 120 day challenge, you get a security token that can be turned in to come to one of our events, meet and greets, things like that, correct? Yes. And what I really like is that they're going to incentivize investors to create their own economies through these security tokens. So let's say when Apple rolls out their, their own security token, well, if you buy in the Apple coin, for example, you're going to be able to save 5%. And this is just a fake scenario. But let's say you'd be able to save 5% on whatever uh, product you're actually buying. So that's going to incentivize people to say, why am I going to use the dollar when I can buy these Apple tokens and then purchase my goods? And then you have your own economy. And it actually goes back into the, this is a little history lesson, I guess. But back in the 1800s, before there was the US dollar, the economies used to function on these things called scripts, which are S-C-R-I-P. And they used to create their own economy. So if you worked at a coal mill in Oklahoma, you would get paid in these scripts, not US dollars. And you'd only be able to exchange those scripts in that environment. So what that does is the people who are issuing the scripts also control all the assets. So it's a win-win for the business owners and kind of a lose-lose for the people who are <laughs> within that economy. But I thought that was really interesting. You know, it's interesting you said that. So imagine this in this modern day economy. So all these ecosystems, crypto ecosystems are creating their own economy, but you're going to need a bridge to be able to bridge the two ecosystems. Like the two scripts together, you would have a bridge, XRP, to actually bridge that across. So that's yeah. awesome. So one thing I was going to ask too, maybe John or Abdullah, um, in regards to INX, right? I know there was trouble with, I tried to get some INX tokens. I struggled because I know a lot of people say, how do I get into INX? I know Canada did a, a payback. Any information on that or how, Because can you get into it when you're in America right now? Johnny, can you touch upon that? Yeah, so they 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 actually did an IPO offering, and that was back in the May May uh, timeframe, or I should say, sorry, March April timeframe, and that expired right now. So I think what what's going to happen now is they will continue to offer it through their security trading platform. I wasn't able to access it yet. I have to go through the whole uh, KYC portion of it yet. But from what I understand, I know in Canada there were some issues with the way some of the funds happen and i think they were going to refunding it but in the u.s uh i believe it'll be available on its in, on its trading platform at some point in time 
But I, I don't know right now exactly when it is, Coach. But uh, as we hear more and learn more about that, we'll, we'll pass that, that information on forward to folks. Awesome. But, yeah, yeah, we, we want to get you by it. Yeah, we want to get you guys prepared, warm. It's going to be like the new NFT. It's going to be the new DeFi. Uh, it's going to be that type of pump when it comes in. So we got to be ready for that. So awesome. We'll head over to Mario. Mario, first of all, where are you at right now? I mean, last time, where were you in Paris? Now you're in. Where are you at right now? <laughs> yes, I'm in Portugal. And uh, sorry for the background noise, but uh, I ran into some people. And uh, I mean, Johnny, Abdulli, you guys covered so much. I mean, you're making my job really difficult. I'm just wondering, <laughs> if, uh, I've got some people with me. I'm just wondering if they happen to know anything about security tokens. Uh, let me just ask my friend here. Do you know anything about security tokens? Uh, Is it maybe? Yeah, yeah. I mean. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Crypto <laughs> speed <laughs> Kidding me. Guys? Oh my God, this is crazy, guys. So you guys know. Crypto Cito is on our channel every we had no idea Crypto Cito was gonna be on right now. So this is this, this is next level yeah. stuff. The floor is yours, guys. <laughs> That's all. Awesome. Yeah, I love the presentation. I mean security tokens honestly is a big, big thing and uh that you're raising awareness on this topic so early is very, very valuable, I guess, for everybody listening. And we also got Crypto Chucky here. You hey also guys. met him. <laughs> What's up, bro? This, this, hold on. This is freaking awesome, dude. We honestly, the, the team had no idea that Crypto Cito, they were going to be on here. So this is a very, very special. We're taking the shit worldwide, guys. So so thank you. So what? So talk to us about, you know, Crypto Cito, you guys. What do you guys think about security tokens? Yeah, so I'm not the expert on security tokens, but we are lucky to have Zach with us because he is actually, since a couple of months, really, really deep into that topic. He also read and learned about INX, um, I don't know, a year ago, half a year ago, when they were like still designing it. So I, I think we can just give it over to him and he can share some some insights about security tokens, the whole industry, and also I think the challenges, because that's very, very important. Yeah, hi guys. Thank you, uh, first Mario, that I can be here with you. Uh, happy to be here. And actually I, I wrote my uh, scientific paper about uh, tokenization of real estate. Um, one year ago, so uh, I'm kind of keen into tokenization of real estate in this topic specifically. Um, and yeah, I mean, CryptoCito already mentioned it. There are um, some problems, some hurdles, uh, which we have to fight. And I think INX is really tackling that with um, the offering of a, sec a secondary market because uh, I, was, I was watching the market like since 2017 and there were basically like two projects and maybe two or three scams and now more and more projects are involving but the main issue was still to, to trade with the security tokens because uh, as we know it needs a lot of regulation uh, and regulatory work and we see the government is, is doing something for that and open the gate and with INX I see a really good platform which enables trading also with security tokens. This maybe, is, yeah, maybe I can add something else to that. Yep. Let's share it, turn the screen like that. Um, so, I mean, the thing is about like security tokens, you, you have to fundamentally build the blockchain in a different way, right? If you make it on the blockchain. Um, it also touches upon privacy, data protection of the users, right? Because in order to be regulatory compliant, you have to make sure that everyone's KYC, for example, right? So INX tackles that. There's also other projects that I covered already one and a half years ago uh, po called Polymath. They're also in the um, top race for being the next STO platform, right? Currently they're in the ITM. They're currently also running their incentivized testnet and are about to launch. So it's cool to see like there's more and more projects trying to um, trying to be like security platforms where you can also issue um, security tokens, right? And then you have to build a whole secondary marketplace, like like uh, Zach was saying, right? You have to provide liquidity. There need to be the right incentives, um, but uh, it's all kind of like in a regulatory framework. And I think when this happens, when we get to the stage where you have a, a, a good liquid marketplace for security tokens, that's where real estate companies, traditional financial institutions, all these big players, when they get really interested, right? Because then you can also have different opportunities to onboard new stakeholders and shareholders on your company, for example, right? So I think it's 
I mean, Coach and I, we talk a lot about narratives. <laughs> He's putting up the show. <laughs> we talk a lot about nar narratives and hype cycles in crypto. And to be honest, I think this year, obviously, DeFi and NFTs are huge, right? But I think security tokens inevitably are going to be really, really huge. Not sure if this year, maybe INX can launch it. Um, maybe in a, in a year from now or two or three years from now, it doesn't matter, but it's, it's going to come for sure. And that's why I think it makes sense to position yourself today in that niche, right? Because it is going to come 100%. So um, find no solid projects in that field. Again, there's a couple of projects that are um, trying to build something like that. And yeah. Uh, yeah, just dig deep into that and maybe stack some coins already today, right? I mean, that's, I think, makes sense to front run the, the hype and front run the pump yeah. um, instead of chasing it. So, yeah. yeah. Maybe also cover like uh, INX is is one of the first um, exchanges, security exchanges, which are approved from the SAC, and um, we see that the European uh, countries and the US countries have like big uh, discrepancies, and for example, but we also see um, the development in European countries. We have, for example, Swarm Markets, which also provides a secondary market, which is also Buffin approved, which is uh, their regu the regulatory um, department from Germany. So we see um, a growth in the overall market. And there is also Swarm um, Network, which is like the platform to issue the securities. So we see we have the platform to issue the securities, and then we have another platform to trade with these uh, assets. And I think um, this topic is going to be really, really huge. I think Johnny also covered that. We can almost co uh, almost tokenize everything what we can imagine. It's a multi-trillion market. And if we go into this topic as well, we may have to mention uh, um, we have if we, if we look at security tokens, we have equity tokens, which have like an underlying, uh, for example, real estate, which enables um, the, the retail markets to invest in properties, which was not possible earlier because there are high entry barriers. They have to uh, make a down payment, which they can't afford. And now they can say, okay, I want to invest 50 bucks and I own a piece of real estate. This is something completely new. It's, yeah, we couldn't do that earlier. And then on the other side, we have the uh, debt side, which is also covered by security token, which means people have rights to claim something and they can say, okay, I give you the money and for that I get the money back with interest, for example, like normal debts, like fixed income and it opens gates like you can't imagine. It's like really, 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 really huge. I mean, we could, we could talk like 10 hours about that, but I think that would be like way too much. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's really interesting and I hope the, the hype, which um, like, I hope the hype is coming soon which how it comes in DeFi as well. But um, if you're in now in this topic and really dig deeper, you're, you're well early. positioned, yeah. early. You're really early day adopter. Yeah, sure. I think that's the biggest thing, Wars. And we'll wrap it up with this. It's like, as you can see, if you've been watching this long, you're very, very interested in this, right? Number one, we're early. Number two is you're seeing where we're heading to. We're heading to a decentralized environment, peer-to-peer -peer network, where we literally become the ecosystem. I mean, think about this right now. You got Johnny Crypto in the East Coast. We got, uh, you know, Abdullah's out in Florida. We got these guys in Portugal. Think about this 15 years ago. We're all connected. We had no idea they're even coming on. This whole other crypto community. We are creating an ecosystem of community. We are in the investors and the infrastructure that works. So I want you to think about that as you're listening to this. We are all in different places all over the world. So if you really think about how early you are in the inf infrastructure and in the investment of the new world, that's what it's all about. Whereas in this crypto scene, I talk about a lot on the channel. It's like stay out of the, you know, the, the tribalism of one or the other. Let's work together as an ecosystem to rise up. I mean, this is making me emotional. I mean, this is so crazy. I mean, he surprised us with having crypto Cito and his dear friend there. I mean, this is freaking awesome. So Warriors. <laughs> We're going to keep bringing this information to you guys. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to put this out to the universe. All of us are going to be in Portugal with you guys very, very soon. So we're going to fly out there. We're going to do a Portugal trip. We're going to have some fun. No cocktails, though, like in Vegas, what I did. <laughs> just, I got emotional. I was crying for like an hour and a half, but I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. All right, Warriors. So comment down below what you guys would like to hear from this research team. And maybe we'll have a special guest next time. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. As we always say, Warriors. 
Rise. Get your shit together. Let's go.